Medtronic Technologies impacted more than 72 million people in the last year, equating to two people every second. Harnessing the power of technology to take healthcare further, each technology has unique benefits designed to serve patients. The goal of this program is to get closer to the patient and delve into the challenges and impact of each technology in practice. This is the Medtronic MedEd learning experience. The Sonar Med airway monitoring system should not be used as the sole basis for diagnosis or therapy and is intended only as an adjunct in patient assessment. Medtronic's medical education programs are offered to provide attendees education on FDA cleared indications and use of our products when applicable. The contents and conclusions of the following program are solely those of the speakers unless otherwise cited. The speakers are responsible for all content and any necessary permissions. The speakers receive funding from Covidian LP, a Medtronic company, for this speaking engagement. For this segment of the series, a discussion on unplanned extubation in the NICU. We will dive into the clinical outcomes and financial implications of unplanned extubation. To help answer this question is Nikki Davidson, a master's level trained nurse who works at a level four NICU in a dual capacity role at the bedside and in quality assurance and process improvement. Say my patient had a unplanned extubation. What exactly does that mean in terms of the short and long-term clinical outcomes? Well, in the short term, my infant may require re-intubation, which as we know, includes its own risks of soft tissue damage or airway injury. Uh, per Dr. Hatch, 88% uh, of the infants in his study were re-intubated within 72 hours of their unplanned extubation. This is a pretty significant subset of reintubation post unplanned extubation. Um, so that's, that's a large risk of um, soft tissue injury. <clears throat> and reintubations, especially emergent intubations, are always going to run the risk of airway trauma. <clears throat> Next, after an unplanned extubation, the baby may start desatting <clears throat> and may suffer setbacks in baseline O2 requirement. Um, which means this is probably going to lead to longer time on the vent, longer length of stay. Um, it can be quite frustrating for families uh, and caregivers alike. Um, unplanned extubations can also result in hypoxia if oxygenation or ventilation is not adequate after that tube has been removed. So this hypoxia can progress to hemodynamic instability, hypotensions, arrhythmias, brain damage, cardiac arrest, um, or even death if not successfully treated. Um, we have to remember that time is brain. So for every moment a critical airway is dislodged, the brain could be losing access to critical oxygenation. You can see from the side effects just listed why reports consistently show that patients who require reintubation after unplanned extubation drive so many clinical and financial outcomes. Now, let's take a moment to review the perspective of the parents. The NICU is an inherently stressful place for parents. Um, not all NICU admissions are expected, and for most family partners, the unit is already intimidating. There are unfamiliar pieces of equipment, um, new lights and sounds to be accustomed to, new medical jargon to learn, and on top of that, you have to worry over the health and welfare of your newest family member. Now imagine all the emotions that can accompany an unplanned extubation. Um, there may be stress or guilt surrounding the unplanned extubation, especially if it occurs during family-centered care. Uh, there may be the additional trauma of being at the bedside um, when the team trouble is troubleshooting the airway. There's frustration at setbacks and baseline oxygen requirements and increased length of stay and time on the vent. Um, and that directly translates into financial stressors um, in terms of additional length of stay, as well as stress over work flexibility and visitation. In summary, these family units have a baseline stress level, um, which can really be compounded with the additional stressor of an unplanned extubation. All right, let's look at long-term. Um, in the long-term, unplanned extubations have been associated with bronchospasm, aspiration pneumonia, hypotensions, arrhythmias, cardiorespiratory arrest, and even death. These are serious outcomes. Um, but what's worse is that 
these infants are at a higher risk of having this happen again. Um, it, we know that repeat unplanned extubations are associated with um, BPD, bronchopulmonary dysplasias, trachs, and subclotic stenosis. Um, furthermore, infants who need to be reintubated, which according to Dr. Hatch's study is 88% within 72 hours, um, especially those intubations performed in emergent situations can be associated with uh, laryngeal or tracheal injury or scarring, pulmonary injury from excessive ventilation or IVH. According to Dr. Hatch's 2020 study, unplanned extubations were associated with an additional leak on the vent, uh, 10 more days in the unit, and a whopping $50,000 more in increased total hospital costs. Based upon these findings, um, Dr. Hatch, using numbers from 2017, estimates that if even 10% of the infants in the US delivered from 22 to 28 weeks gestational age and less than 1500 grams had an unplanned extubation, it would result in 14,000 more vent days, 22,000 more days at the hospital and in excess of $60 million in direct hospital costs nationally. That is not good. Please tune in next week for a new segment from this series, wherever you find your podcasts. This is the Medtronic MedEd Learning Experience. Thank you for listening.